Hey guys, Mark Kwok here. Today, let's talk about something that uh, I never thought I'd be here talking about, and that is the Apple Watch Ultra. Many of you guys may know that I am a huge watch fan. Currently, I have four automatic watches, but uh, I plan to continue to be an enthusiast for the rest of my life. Given that that's the case, why am I here talking about this guy, the Apple Watch Ultra? Buckle in, this might be a little bit of a longer episode because I have thoughts and I wanna answer some questions that I think people generally have when they're thinking about buying an Apple Watch when they're already a mechanical or automatic watch owner. So the first one is actually around the size of this guy. So this is a 49 millimeter watch. Like most people don't wear watches over 43, 44 millimeters. If it goes into 45, 46, 47, people think that's like, you better be a tree trunk of a man in order to be able to wear that. 49 is even higher than that. So like, is it even wearable? I personally think the answer is yes. I think the size is actually good. Like it's practical because there's a big screen, on, but it doesn't really overhang over the wrist, at least mine. So I have a six and a half inch wrist, uh, 16 centimeters, I think. And it's it looks good, it looks appropriate. And I actually really appreciate this size more than even the smaller one. So. Weirdly enough, the 49 millimeters to me works. The second question, undoubtedly, will this replace any of my mechanical or automatic watches? And the answer to that is no. I think it will take up time on the wrist. So there is some, you know, sort of like sharing of duties in a sense. But to me, an automatic watch, a mechanical watch is a different purpose, right? And so given that that's the case, I don't think the, the Venn diagram overlaps so much that you would need to substitute one for the other. Like I'm not going to go out there and sell my Patek Philippe because of the fact that I have this Apple Watch. It's just not going to happen. Think about it this way. You have a TV and you have artwork. You can, the real estate in your house is a wall. Like you can put TV up there or you can put artwork up there. Like does it replace like, yeah, there's like the frame by Samsung that's trying to be art and whatever. But let's be real, like there's not really the equivalency, right? There's a little bit of Venn diagram there where there's a middle ground, like they both take up space on your wall. They're both to be looked at. They both are, you know, maybe potentially statement pieces, but they all, they, they occupy different things. You look at art with like an emotion behind it where you like to have this kind of um, t sentimental value with it, or it's actually highly valuable. So you have a proud ownership of it. A TV is like, I wanna watch the latest show. It's more utilitarian in nature. It's like more for my practical needs on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't know if that analogy works, but to me, it kind of does. So the other question is, how do I actually use this thing? Like, what are the main sort of tenets of use? Well, first and foremost, and I think this is probably the majority of wearable wearers, the number one thing I use this for is fitness. A lot of people have Garmin's, they have Fitbits. There are other types of activity trackers and things like that out there. But the Apple Watch does a great job with that and all the slew of apps and things like that are on there help to make my fitness journey better. Various things like I can track how fast my runs are, my heartbeat, knowing exactly what my paces are when I'm going from this place to that place, understanding how many calories I've burned. Like all these sort of things are just right there. And your phone can only do so much because it's not connected to you. Do you need the Apple Watch Ultra to do that? Absolutely not. But nevertheless, it is a great fitness companion. Number two, surprisingly, sleep tracking. I never really know how good my sleep is. And I have like, you know, you think you've gotten enough rest, but some reason you're really tired through the day or vice versa. Like I, I just am curious, why is that the case? And this does a great job of giving you kind of the metrics, like how long were you in deep sleep? How long were you in REM? Like these sort of things, I just had no idea. Now I can track that. And if in particular, I'm having a stretch of time where I'm sleeping poorly or what have you, I can at least monitor it and see how I'm doing. Then of course there's like notifications. I mean, if you wanna know like someone slacked you or someone texted you or, or emailed you, you can get that right on your you know, wrist as opposed to on your phone. That may be a varying utility to people. I will say that is both a pro and a con. Uh, if you're like inundated with notifications and you're already feeling ADD, this is not gonna help. It's just gonna make things worse. 
But if you do feel like it makes you a little more efficient, like you know some, oh, I got the email that I needed to see. Uh, let me make time for it later on. Like if those type of things help you and just having like, a computer on your wrist is like a, a, a better way to be productive, then I'd say that it is absolutely great. Then there's like some random little things that the watch can do that I think are really cool. Like for example, you can make this a flashlight or you can find your phone. If you can't find your phone elsewhere, you can just press a button and you can actually get the phone to ring. So that's, that's nifty sometimes. If you're in the Apple ecosystem, there's all these different things that the watch can help you do. You can unlock your laptop or your phone without typing in anything, like because it knows you're there because you are there with the, with the watch on your wrist. Another question is, what do I not like about the Apple Watch? Well, one of the things I've already mentioned is that sometimes if you're getting notifications now on your device here on the wrist, it doubles the stress or doubles the amount of ADD that you would normally have, which I think is actually bad for you. I do also think just naturally having a device on your wrist that needs to be charged. Now, I, I know that automatic watches and stuff like that need to also kind of charge in a sense every you know couple days or something like that. So, so you have to move it or wind it. But this is a digital device that just like any other device will need to be charged via electricity and just you have to dock it. And so that, to me kind of sucks. Now, thankfully the Apple Watch Ultra is the best battery life that Apple Watch has ever had. You can go like three days without charging. So I do think that it's not really a con in relative terms, but it just, just the fact that you have this another thing to charge. Now I know we're already going so crazy on this, but a couple more things I want to add. I have all three of the bands that Apple Ultra comes with. So you can either get it on the Alpine strap, you can get it on the ocean strap, or you can get it on the trail strap. I got all three, and I will say that all three are great. Are they worth $100 a piece? Probably not, to be honest. Like they're gonna rip or something. It's just like fabric sometimes, right? Or rubber. But I do think they look pretty good. I think that, you know, like it's, it's pretty high quality for what you're getting with the material that you have. I also think that they're quite comfortable and overall a pretty good strap, all three of them. Uh, I would say my favorite is probably the trail strap for comfort and the Alpine strap for looks. Um, practicality is probably the ocean strap because it, it doesn't soak, for instance, in like a water or something like that. So that's why I have all three, but at the end of the day, any of those straps are great and I think any of them will do for you. Now this last part is really for you automatic watch, mechanical watch people. I resisted the Apple Watch for pretty much all the way through now. And I had this very principled thing, like I'm not gonna get an Apple Watch because one, it's, it's providing an existential sort of like crisis for this thing that I love, automatic watches, mechanical watches. Uh, also, it just would take wrist time away from those watches, but I can't deny that there are some really cool benefits that you get out of being an Apple Watch guy. And I'm gonna flip this on his head for a moment, but I do actually think that if you're a watch collector, then an Apple Watch is exactly something that should be in your collection because in your collection, that is just one more piece of it that makes you that enthusiast, that gives you the appreciation for this thing that is on your wrist and attached to you and so on. I say go for it. If it makes you a healthier human being by working out, then why not? Like you can wear your watches at other times and then you can wear this for fitness. All right, that was a long video and I'm sorry for those who don't really care, but thank you so much for watching. My name is Mark Kwok. This is my thoughts on the Apple Watch Ultra. I'll see you guys on the next one.